ESPN Plus, after weeks of anticipation, one of the biggest matches of the season is finally here. Tonight in Morgantown, number five, West Virginia, and number one, Marshall Clash, and put their undefeated records on the line in the 26th Mountain State Derby. Marshall is unbeaten and untied this fall, clearly the top team in the conference and the country. West Virginia would love to be the first team to take points from the Thundering Herd this season and stay in contention for the two seed in the Sun Belt Tournament. Delighted to have you with us on this night of nights in Morgantown. Nick Farrell here alongside Adam Zundel and Adam tonight. West Virginia truly is the center of the college soccer universe. Yeah, we've been waiting for this one for a while, haven't we? When West Virginia and Marshall get together in any sport, it's a big deal. And now that these teams arrived at this match, ranked in the top five in the country, it gets turned up a little bit. The Thundering Herd, you said, have been dominant this year and are very deserving of that number one ranking. West Virginia has had a little bit of a bumpier road, but still are one of just six teams to be undefeated this season. I can't wait to see which players are going to step up under these bright lights in front of this sellout crowd here tonight. Well, there are so many outstanding players that suit up for both of these sides. For Marshall, the co-leading goal scorers are Matthew Bell and Marco Silva. No sophomore slump for Matthew Bell. He had 10 goals last year. He has seven this year. He is all over the park. He is a playmaker. He's coming off three assists the other day against Coastal Carolina. Marco Silva, he got off to a really hot start this season. He had seven goals in just six matches. He would love to find his form here tonight against the Mountaineers. Meanwhile, West Virginia will counter with sophomore striker Marcus Caldera and senior winger Yutaro Sukata. Marcus Caldera is the proven goal scorer for the Mountaineers. A big time player who makes big time plays. Here is the game winner against Portland earlier this season. And Yutaro Sakata off the ball, making this tremendous run. Another electric player in that West Virginia attack. Well, this certainly has all the makings of a memorable night here in the University City. It's gold versus green, Stratford versus Grassy, West Virginia versus Marshall. Starting 11s and kickoff next. Time for kickoff in the 26th Mountain State Derby from Dick Dulesque Soccer Stadium. A look now at the starting lineup for the number one Thundering Herd, 12-0 overall, 5-0 in the Sun Belt. It's a 4-3-3 for the visiting Herd tonight. Keep an eye on Matthew Bell, the striker. Bell averaging a goal contribution per game in his collegiate career. Making his 13th start in between the sticks for Marshall is the grad student Gabriel Perota, a native of Paraguay, six clean sheets this season, which is top 10 in the nation. The head coach of the Thundering Herd is Chris Grassi, who led Marshall to a national championship during the pandemic alter 2020-21 season. What about West Virginia, number five in the nation, nine and four overall, nine oh and four overall, and two oh and three in the Sun Belt Conference. The lineup exactly the same as it was for the conference clash a week ago at South Carolina. That means Braden Borutsky is starting at center back again, and Dante Huckabee, the Morgantown native, will start at right back. But we're told that center back Carlos Hernando and right back Toma Di Catane are available tonight for WVU. The keeper for West Virginia is the senior Jackson. Lee. He also has six clean sheets, top eight in the nation, and tied for the Sun Belt lead with Perota. Dan Stratford is perhaps Chris Grassi's brightest pupil. They coach together at the University of Charleston. Stratford won a pair of national championships there in 17 and 19 and is now in his fourth season at WVU. Well, at long last, the moment is here. Some call soccer the world's game, but this is the Mountain State's game. This is the night. Yes, Marshall has won a national championship, and the Mountaineer women have even played for one, too. But in terms of soccer matches contested here in almost heaven, this simply is as big as it gets. And there's no greater theater, no greater drama than two unbeaten rivals going head to head. It's nearly time to lift the curtain on the 26th Mountain State Derby. Well, to invoke the late Bill Stewart, we got you a good one, right? Um, I mean, is so. it going to be, this is going to be so much fun. And we have a lot of storylines to get to tonight. We're going to talk about a ton of them. Obviously, Coach Stratford and, Co and Coach Grassy, their relationship. But tonight, as with all nights, it's about the players. It's about the players and which player can withstand 
this environment and thrive in it. This is going to be unlike a regular season matchup, I think, that either of these sides have played in. But it's about players and execution and all this other stuff that's on the periphery. It's fun for us to talk about. It's going to make for a great night. But it's about who's going to execute here in this moment. Absolutely so, Adam. Historically, West Virginia has had the upper hand in the Mountain State Derby. 16 wins for WVU compared to seven for Marshall. But the last three meetings evenly split, one win apiece with one draw in 2021. Our referee tonight is Lucas Feathers. He blows the whistle, and we're underway in this historic rivalry clash between number one Marshall and number five West Virginia. All gold for WVU on a gold rush night in Morgantown, attacking the goal to the left on your monitor. Marshall in the green striped jerseys with white shorts and socks, attacking the goal to the right. Early throw in coming here for WVU. Formation the same as it was against South Carolina, that means Freddie Jorgensen and Dante Huckabee are the wing backs. The center backs are Max Broughton in possession and Brayden Borutsky. The midfielders, as always, Otto Olakainen and Ryan Bear. Luke McCormick with the ball now. The attacking midfielder and the attacking trident for WVU left to right is Utaro Sukata, Marcus Caldera, and Sergio Ors Navarro. I see Utaro Sukata drawing a lot of attention here in the early going two green and white jerseys flying at him on his first touch and it was really interesting the other night uh, when west virginia was at home the crowd clamoring for utaro sakata to get the ball and make something happen and we got a great crowd here on hand tonight see if that can be the proverbial 12th man and a couple of bad touches here for Marshall in the early going. Uncharacteristic of the herd. You mentioned Sukata. He was the Sunbelt Player of the Week last week. This week, that honor belongs to Pablo Simon, the junior from Spain. Two goals and two assists, including a game-winning goal in that 6-1 win for Marshall over Coastal Carolina Friday. Good defending in the midfield by Taibu Okiyoshi. The captain for the Thundering Herd, he's paired with Tio Godar in the midfield. So facing Marshall is obviously going to be a terrific challenge for West Virginia. We talked about their offensive depth. And with this reconfigured back line, it's going to be a monumental task for the Mountaineers. Both teams entering this contest unbeaten on the year. Marshall, the only team left in the country with a perfect winning percentage. 12 wins, no losses, no draws. Both teams among the final six unbeaten sides in Division I men's soccer. Here's Marcus Caldera, the Sun Belt's leader in goals. Working off Otto Olakainen, heavy touch taken away by Marshall. That's Amen Sordo and Matthew Bell dropping it back to the center back, Takahiro Fujita. It's Fujita and Morris Dugan, the two center backs. Fujita, a freshman from Japan. Dugan, a senior from Germany. Mountaineers putting effective pressure early on. That's gonna be something to watch here tonight, how and when West Virginia presses Marshall's defenders. There might not be more backs that touch the ball more than Marshall's defenders very comfortable very patient back there and they go slow to fast and back to front as fast as any team in the country they will they are not afraid to back pass they're not afraid to be patient and then all of a sudden if you get caught in a press they will pop it over top of you and unleash that attack quick note it's Alexander Sterngard paired with Okiyoshi in the midfield Godar playing as a fullback in the back four for Marshall along with Hai Pinto on the near side. Free kick coming here for Marshall. By the way, our referee is Lucas Feathers. Assistants Ross Kleinstuber and Sam Reddles. Alternate is Sam Cook. Just getting tangled up there, but you know, you want to be physical with Bell, who was taken down on that play. And no doubt, Adam, both of these teams are very physical squads. That's really uh, part of the brand in the Sun Belt, if you will. We've seen West Virginia here at Dick Dillest play a ton of physical games this season. Yeah, and both like to play, but, uh, you know, if you're going against that, as Marshall's trying to connect here, if you're going against that, you want to knock some players off. We've seen Marcus Caldera deliver and be hit as well, and Marshall can do the same thing with its attacking players. 
Thundering Herd in the attacking third here. Cross deflected well by Dante Huckabee, the West Virginia native. Long ball to Caldera. Perota's way off his line, but he's in the right spot to blast it back into the attacking third for Marshall. Thundering Herd can hurt you at a moment's notice. This Marshall team, 38 goals scored compared to just five goals conceded. Number one in the country in goals scored. Number one in the country in goal differential at plus 33. I mean, Adam, look at these stats. This is the resume for the best team in the country. When you say they're the undisputed number one team in the country, well, that's what you mean. You, you can't do better than lead the country in goals scored and goals against average. Bit of a messy situation here for West Virginia. Marshall into the box, shot on goal, deflected across the line. Matthew Bell has scored. And Marshall takes an early 1-0 lead in the Mountain State Derby. Right to form for Marshall, attacking the right side of West Virginia's defense. The ball gets across, and Matthew Bell is there to clean it up. That's what a goal scorer does. He starts this by chipping it over the top. A great job there by Iomesh, and Bell follows it up and gets to that back post and gives Marshall the early 1-0 lead. Lee got a mitt to the cross, but Bell still put it away anyway. It all started because of a bad pass from the back line by West Virginia. And the thundering herd on the road, out in front in this rivalry clash. Well, Stoppage Mike. here is we've got Marshall players on the wrong side of the field as we await a restart here. Well, like we say, after any goal, how are you going to respond for both sides? Will Marshall continue to press and have that energy? I imagine that will be the case. West Virginia now has to, I don't think you have to really change a whole lot, but your sense of urgency is turned up and you want to have a positive response. You have this crowd behind you and you want to use that as much as you can. But this is, uh, this is what Marshall does. They, they get on top of you and they make your life really, really difficult. And one mistake, they punish you for it. Well, Marshall doing its best to silence what could be a record crowd here at Dick Delesque Stadium with an early goal from Matthew Bell. Credit to Adam Iomesh with the assist. So for Bell, it's his eighth goal of the season, 18th of his career. On the other end, West Virginia, cross from Caldera, is poked away by Fujita. The assist for Iomesh is his fifth of the season. Adam Sordo on the ball. Mountaineers win it back. Here's Otto Olakainen in the midfield. Well, you know, Nick, I don't think any of us thought this match would end up uh, scoreless. Mm. Uh, so you have to kind of understand if you're West Virginia that you were probably going to let one in. Marshall just way too good to try and post a shutout, although that, of course, is the goal. So if you're playing the long game, if you're the Mountaineers, you have to understand they're going to get one. And it happened to come first. And you have to respond if you're Marshall, same thing. This is a pretty potent West Virginia attack. We'd love, to, we'd love to get another shutout to your credit, but you know that this is a long way to go. Thundering Herd with seven total shutouts this season, six belonging to the goalkeeper Gabriel Perota, the seventh a combined shutout against Cleveland State. Sukata wins a header. Marshall has it back on the far side. Caldera tracking back, can't intercept the pass. So here's Pablo Simone, the Sun Belt Conference Player of the Week. Okiyoshi. Pace slowing down just a little bit as Marshall tries to settle in. But by a snap of the fingers, the herd can turn deadly as we saw a few moments ago on the Matthew Bell goal in the sixth minute. Uh-oh. Player slips and falls. Here's Marcus Caldera. Caldera left-footed shot is saved by Perota. Good job in pursuit there by Fujita to 
force Caldera to take this off his left foot, but the slippage there starts Marcus Caldera on the run. Perota able to make that save rather easily, all things considered. But both goalkeepers called into action here in the first nine minutes. Yeah, and you talked about Perota being off of his line. That is not a surprise. That is the way he plays. Marshall plays with essentially 11 field players because he gets involved in the buildup as well. So not a surprise to see him uh, high up on the pitch because he will get involved Marshall, in the buildup. Marshall coach Chris Grassi has praised Perota not just as a tremendous shot stopper, which is his job as a goalkeeper, but as a great distributor because they ask a lot of him to help get involved. He's got a touch here as the Thundering Herd try to regroup. Grassi also praising his grad student goalkeeper as a fine young man saying he's a servant leader. That's a direct qu quote from Grassi. Player that stays after practice, after team meals, will clean up after his teammates. On the other end, Matthew Bell trying to send a player forward. He had Amen Sordo at the penalty spot, but it was deflected and scooped up by Jackson Lee. Yeah, that's what we call a team dad, right? The one ah, that kind of takes say. care of everybody else. And uh, he also has 34 career shutouts, which is the most among active players. So uh, not only is he a, a gentleman, but a fine player as well and a good representative of the university. Great flicks by the thundering herd. Max Broughton had to intervene to clear it away. Throw in for Marshall coming. You know, Nick, we talked about which players are going to step up under these bright lights. And surprise, surprise, Matthew Bell. The star for Marshall comes through in the early going. And again, still a long way to go with this. But West Virginia's star had an opportunity. Was not able to convert. Opportunity the other way. Ors Navarro with the through ball to McCormick. Back to Ors Navarro! Equalizer! Listen to that roar! West Virginia won, Marshall won, and we barely played 10 minutes. Well, we knew this was going to be a lot of fun, and here we go. Again, I thought 0-0 wasn't a likely outcome. I thought 1-0 wasn't a likely outcome. So here we go, <laughs> off to the races. This is just two good teams going at it and a clinical finish here. West Virginia winning that ball in the midfield and off to the run. A great overlap there and just a terrific finish there for Ors Navarro going to get the ball out of the net. Hustle play and another assist here for Luke McCormick to knock this one up here for the Mountaineers. How many big moments has Luke McCormick been a part of for West Virginia? The fifth year from Derby, England, with the assist on the Ors Navarro leveler. He had the assist on Ike Swiger's goal. In the spring of 2021, West Virginia beating Marshall 1-0. The final team to beat the Herd before that national championship run. He had a goal against number three Pitt in 2021. That is a big time play. He now is in sole possession of fourth place with 20 career assists surpassing West Virginia legend Andy Bevan after that assist. A, a lot to talk about with both of these goals. We've seen a ball get one sent mm. in and then following that up. So we saw Matthew Bell do it, chip it, chase it, get to that back post. Uh, Sergio Ors Navarro had to work a little bit harder to get his goal um, past uh, Perota. Here's Ryan Bear on the ball, and he certainly deserves credit for that goal. It was his tackle on Taimu Okiyoshi that sprung the Mountaineers free. Bear, one of the unsung heroes on this West Virginia team, the senior from North Carolina, so steady in the midfield. And by the way, if he logs 50-plus minutes tonight, he will surpass 5,000 for his career. He has not scored a goal, but that stat tells you just how integral he's been to Dan Stratford's side over the last few seasons. So Adam, how do you expect Marshall to respond after allowing West Virginia to tie this one up? Well, probably with a goal, right? I mean, that's just kind <laughs> that's of the, the way it goes. That's just the way that this pace is going. Um, yeah, I mean, these are two teams just going toe to toe. Both teams are taking chances. I think that's the neat part about this not being a knockout match. Uh, that teams can go after. You know, sometimes in the NCAA tournament or Sunbelt tournament, when it is knockout play, you can get a little bit tighter. This one is free flowing. I think both teams feel pretty confident about their postseason hopes. 
So this is the kind and brand of soccer I think we are hoping to see tonight. So I continue to see these teams continue to try and be open. Long ball, pass to defender, Caldera in the clear! 2-1 West Virginia, just like that! Well, we talked about the big time players under these bright lights. Caldera didn't take advantage of the first one, makes the most of the second one, and we have three goals here in just 12 minutes. Unbelievable start here to this one, and we still got a long way to go. Boy, is this a lot of fun. Marcus Caldera, the Sun Belt Conference leader in goals. 10 on the season, 15 on his career. The Portland goal was huge. This is pretty big, too. Oh, we talked about how quickly Marshall goes from back to front. How about West Virginia popping that one over the top? Caldera, so big and strong, gets to the ball first and puts it away. That's a tough ask there for Perota. We know how good of a shot stopper he is, but even under those circumstances, that is a tough one. And you see that crowd celebrating. A great shot of the crowd there here tonight. A lot of energy in this stadium. They'll credit the assist to the goalkeeper, Jackson Lee, on the long ball. Believe that's his first career assist, certainly his first assist in West Virginia. Maybe in his collegiate career, he played two seasons at George Mason before transferring to WVU. It's the 12th minute. West Virginia has already overcome a 1-0 deficit and is now just the second team. Only two teams have led Marshall this season. West Virginia, one of those two. Well, we've got a long way to go here, and we talked about Perota getting involved in the attack. He also has an assist this year. Bad decision. Here's Olakainen, a little bit strong for Caldera. It's two goals for Marcus Caldera. A brace in seconds. Can you believe this? 3-1. I'm not sure that I can. Marcus Caldera with a brace just seconds after he gives West Virginia the 2-1 lead. The Mountaineers are flying here, and we knew Marshall was going to have a lot of touches in the back. West Virginia picked an opportunity to attack, wins it, and sets up this third goal. Well, if you watch this replay, this does not look like the number one team in the nation, quite frankly. Marshall has fallen asleep here. Otto Olakainen picks off the pass. It's not a great touch from Caldera. But he makes do with it anyway. One more time, Dugan's pass picked cleanly away by Olakainen, who gets the assist on the Caldera goal with his left foot. It's 11 goals this season for the Sun Belt leader. Well, and we've seen Marshall have some touches, and they will at times appear casual. And it was West Virginia just surging on some of those casual passes and that casual appearance. But it's not unusual for Marshall to just kind of stand on the ball and look around, as we see right here. It's, that's not unusual, but it's what it's West Virginia's response, pressing some of those moments. And then Marshall has to hurry up and defend, and that's been a little bit of a change. We've played just over 12 minutes. We've had already four goals. West Virginia seems to be on the run again. Here's Marcus Caldera, thinking about a hat trick perhaps, picked away. Good recovery by Marshall to earn possession back. Sukata pokes it free, Ors Navarro! Boy, it's a frantic pace in favor of the team in gold right now. Uh, I think that one hit, went to Star City uh, <laughs> all the way down the hill. A lot of energy flowing around here, and you have to settle yourself down. Both teams need to settle themselves down a little bit. Marshall huddled after that goal, tried to take a breath and relax. West Virginia flying around. You want to take advantage of that, but you can't get caught in a bad situation and let Marshall pop one over top of you as well. Well, entering this contest, the Thundering Herd had given up just five goals through 12 matches. West Virginia has scored three in the span of less than two minutes. Ors Navarro, 79 seconds later. Caldera, 26 seconds later. Marcus Caldera again. I'm just wondering how much space we're going to need on that screen here <laughs> to get all the scoring that might occur here tonight. Uh, and again, a, another uh, bad giveaway for Marshall. Just a little bit out of sorts here. They need to collect themselves. Still a long way to go in this one. Here's Horst Navarro. A few Marshall players have also lost their footing a couple of times yep. tonight. Good defending in the midfield by Alexander Sterngard. Godar thought he had some space. Falls to Caldera. He's got numbers. But the pass is behind Olakainen. And stepping into it is Okioshi to earn it back for the Thundering Herd. 
Well, West Virginia has not been afraid to press, and that's been a key here in these moments, making Marshall play a little bit quicker and at times being a little quicker to the ball and winning deep in Marshall's own end. Here's Godar charging forward. He's got a teammate through. Believe it was Sordo who was in the box. Throw in coming from Marshall after the clearance. We saw how dynamic Sordo can be with the acrobatic oh. bicycle kick against Coastal Carolina. So a lot of dangerous attacking players. We, you know, we already uh, talked about Matthew Bell and Marco Silva and Marshall's talented attacking players. They just come in waves. So that's what makes them so difficult. You can't just say, oh, we're going to try and stop Matthew Bell tonight and we'll have a great night. Uh, you have to be aware of all of the attacking players because they like to send, Marshall likes to send a lot of runners into that box. That one beyond Huckabee. Could be trouble here for West Virginia. Here's Iomesh on the right foot. Oh, just wide. Looked like a dangerous chance for Adam Iomesh. He scored five goals already this season. Yeah, I think Huckabee got caught a little bit with that ball over his head. Tried to close it down. Got a little bit of help there from Ryan Bear late. But it was almost a second goal from Iomesh. Good strike. And West Virginia has to be really careful on this back line. When Marshall is in that final third, they can be really dangerous. I think the Mountaineers have done a nice job of limiting the touches for Marshall in that part of the field at this time. But again, this reconfigured back line, Dante Huckabee played right back as a, a freshman at Louisville, but this is a different task here tonight, and we'll see if Marshall tries to pursue that point on the field, continue to pursue that point on the field here tonight, but again, the center backs are going to have to be really connected as well, trying to deal with the Marshall attack. Just past a quarter of an hour gone here at Dick Dulesk Soccer Stadium, Nick Farrell and Adam Zundel here with you. An entertaining Sunbelt Conference clash from the University City. And if you're just joining us because you've seen some buzz on Facebook or Twitter, uh, you've missed a lot. Four <laughs> goals in the first 12 minutes of action. Marshall scored first through Matthew Bell, the team's goals leader. And then West Virginia responded with a trio of goals in quick succession. One by Sergio Wars Navarro and a pair by Marcus Caldera, the, the Sunbelt's leader in goals. Shot is deflected. Falls back to the herd. Bell trying to get a touch on it. Shot ricoch ricochets for a corner kick. I think it was Haye Pinto who had the blast that deflected off Broughton. First corner of the night for either team. West Virginia knocking down a couple of shots here, deflecting them. That's really key. The thundering herd, we just talked about not having a ton of touches in that final third. Got a couple of there. But West Virginia able to deflect those. The sophomore from Denmark, Alexander Sterngard, to take. Well, the center back, Morris Dugan, is a great target here. Goal for Marshall. 3-2 in the 18th minute. I'm not sure if I called my shot there, Nick, but Dugan? I think it I think was it Dugan was. on the near post. He's a big target as, out of that center back position, makes that run in the near post and puts it back in the back of the net. Absolutely was. Dugan, the captain, on the near post. So it's an 18th minute goal by Morris Dugan. That's his second of the season. And the assist off the corner kick from Sterngard, his fifth assist of the season. And it's 3-2. And the scoring does not seem like it's going to stop. No, I, I think that the amount of energy in this match has not allowed it to settle. Here's West Virginia asking the question again. Ors Navarro just outside the box. Cross is headed away and defended well by Marshall. It was Dugan again with the intervention. Huckabee chipping toward the corner flag. Marcus Caldera on a brace, his second of the season. Throw in West Virginia. Goals by Bell and Dugan for Marshall. Goals by Ors Navarro and a pair by Caldera for West Virginia. 3-2 Mountaineers, still early in this contest. 
And the set piece was exactly what Marshall needed in that moment, executed to perfection. Great ball from Sterngard. He is the one that takes the corner kicks normally. And again, it was Morris Dugan. I think the ball was in the air when I said he was a good target uh, watching Marshall play this season. They like to get it to him, but that ball can also skip across and, and the, the Thundering Herd like to make a run to that back post. But Dugan had the duty and was able to put it away. This is Pinto for Marshall to Pablo Simone. Pass, surge, pass Freddie Jorgensen for West Virginia. Jorgensen fighting back. And he fouls Simone. Free kick coming for the Thundering Herd. Simone appealing for a yellow card. Well, both players were shoulder to shoulder here. And you see uh, both kind of giving it and a little bit more there at the end. I, I think it is a foul. Uh, I don't think it was a card per the request of Simone, but there definitely was contact. Well, we saw Marshall score a goal about two minutes ago from a set piece. Potentially a sim similar routine here from the corner of the 18-yard box. It'll be Adam Iomesh over the ball for the Thundering Herd, trailing by a goal, a golden chance to equalize here. Service from Iomesh. This time headed away by West Virginia, Jorgensen on the near post. McCormick has his jersey tugged. That's some extracurricular that's unnecessary. It'll be a yellow card to Adam Iomesh. Now that's an important card here as we still have a long way to go in this match. And we talked with both coaches about the importance of composure. You already got the foul on the jersey tug. The whistle had blown. And then that tackle will earn you a card pretty easy for the referee in a game that's not going to have a lot of easy decisions. I think that might have been one of them. West Virginia three, Marshall two. It's the first time this season any opponent has scored multiple goals against the Thundering Herd. Marshall entered this game having only conceded five goals with the best goal differential in the nation at plus 33. But the Thundering Herd has trailed since the 12th minute also marking the most amount of time that it has trailed in a singular match. Entering the game, Marshall had only trailed for four minutes and 17 seconds against Georgia Southern. Went down 1-0, won that game against a Sunbelt foe 3-1. Referee says play on, but McCormick's pass is picked away by Takahiro Fujita for Marshall. Back to Fujita. And back to Perota. You know, with all the talk about this match kind of hitting different, you see it in the way that in the scoreline. This is not something that Marshall has encountered. A lot of it has to do with the energy and this crowd and the talent for West Virginia. But this is a little bit of a different match here tonight. Flag is up for offside. Free kick coming for West Virginia. Just to continue that point, is West Virginia dictating the pace, Adam, or is the atmosphere it just really got these teams sort of out of sorts? Well, I, I think the energy in the building is affecting both teams, but I think what West Virginia is doing is in the press, winning some of those balls, and Marshall's not able to keep that possession. The Thundering Herd love to have the ball. They love to possess large portions of the game. That's not happened in this one, and that's a little bit of an adjustment here that Marshall's going to have to either find ways to have more of the ball and do what they like to do, play slow and then go fast, or they're gonna have to turn things up and adjust with this West Virginia press. May need to check the tape on this, but with the exception of Marcus Caldera's first goal and the corner kick goal by Morris Dugan, I think the other three goals came after miscues by the conceding team. Certainly that's how Matthew Bell scored Marshall's first goal. Here's Iomesh on the far side for the Thundering Herd. Cross toward Bell. Lee has to come out and collect. And they want to go deep once again. Lee boots it to Sukata, but Fujita wins the header. Yeah, I think West Virginia's first two goals came on, on some miscues and press. The third goal came on the pop over top from uh, Jackson Lee and West Virginia, or I'm sorry, Marshall took advantage of a West Virginia miscue and then scored on that set opportunity. Midway through the first half, West Virginia three, Marshall two. 
Flag stays down. Cross into the box. Borutsky puts his right foot into it. Still Simone for Marshall. Back to Sterngard, who had the assist on the corner kick goal. Dugan in possession. He scored the most recent goal. Fujita. Godar. On for Ahmed Sordo. And there's a big pocket of space there. Look out Ahead here. West Virginia defense. Yellow card for Amen Sordo in the 24th minute. Second Marshall player booked in four minutes. That is right in front, uh, front of that standing room only West Virginia crowd over there. Again, emotions are high. You have to be composed in these moments. Have another look at it on the far side. Oh, way late. Absolutely. But Bear has to be careful Absolutely. there with the push as yep. well. I think the referee showed a lot of discretion there because the, the, the foul was pretty egregious and the card on that one is what was warranted. But uh, I think he let Bear get away with maybe a, a little bit more than usual given the nature of that tackle. Well, West Virginia learned a lesson in the 2021, fall 2021 Mountain State Derby when veteran Luke McCormick was sent off late in the contest, which was a 2-2 draw that went to double overtime. Already two yellow cards in this match. Both of them distributed to Thundering Herd players. Sukata wins a corner kick for West Virginia. While there have been a lot of fireworks, Marshall has done a good job against one of the most electric wingers in the country through the first 25 minutes or so. That's been Hai Pinto's assignment. By the way, the number six freshman in the country according to Top Drawer Soccer's Top 100 ranking, which was released earlier this week. Three freshmen for Marshall made the top 10. Constantinos Cristo of West Virginia at number 20. 25th minute corner kick for West Virginia. Ors Navarro, ambitious. Some might say right off the training ground. That one seemed right off the playground. Yeah, I think it caught uh, a lot of Marshall's players just standing and watching this one. Then trying to charge and, and knock it down. But it was a clean look there at the top of the box. That's, that's going to be a difficult one to put on frame. It would certainly go in the highlight reel if you're able to get it. Mm. But yeah, absolutely drawn up and executed pretty well. That, that is a tough ask, though, to uh, try and put that one on frame. Ahmed Sordo on the far side to Adam Iomesh. And now Godar back to Iomesh. Here's Pinto. Pablo Simon. Into Bell, great touch. Deflected by Borutsky. It was a clean look by Okiyoshi. Marshall still in possession. I think the flag went up on the far corner flag. No, it is for a corner kick and Jackson Lee appealing. Why was it not an offside? There'll be some discussion here and some communication between the officials, fourth official, and then the AR and our center. Well, it worked from the near side corner flag. Could it work from the far side? Sternguard again. Curling in, headed away by West Virginia. Luke McCormick hustling for it. Can't get there in time. Ball pinged out toward midfield, and it does fall to McCormick. Chance here for West Virginia. It's a two on three. Through ball to Utaro Sukata. Sukata on his right foot. Off the side netting. Another golden opportunity for the team in gold, but this one just doesn't connect. I got to tell you, I'm a little surprised that the flag stayed down on this one. And this is how much fun this one is. Back and forth. Sakata, maybe a little bit slow on that touch, isn't able to put it on frame. You see Marshall asking for the offside call. It does not end up making a difference, but man, End-to-end -end action here tonight. Every breakaway is, is an opportunity. 
And also give, give a lot of credit to Matthew Bell, who was on his horse chasing that ball down as your uh, top attacking player trying to get back and defend. Saw a flash of speed again there from Whew. Bell. Throw in coming for West Virginia. That is track speed, my friend. That is, <laughs> that was, he's, it's different. Again, again, to choose that phrase, he's, he's, he's built different. He's got nine assists this season. He's got eight goals, including tonight's tally. Last year's Sunbelt Freshman of the Year and first team all Sunbelt honoree. Free kick for Marshall just on the other side of midfield. Yeah, two games of three assists this year, helping to pad that total. And he's proven that he's more than just a goal scorer with those assists. And that's a little bit how he's developed here in his second year at Marshall, not just getting goals. And I say just getting goals in air quotes, um, <laughs> but getting goals and then also just being a dynamic playmaker. Dueling chance from the fans tonight. Capacity crowd beyond capacity crowd at Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium. What a tremendous atmosphere for this Mountain State Derby. By the way, if you're curious, the coaches on both sides expect an attendance record to fall tonight. Will it be the men's soccer attendance record at West Virginia, 2,900? The facility record here at Dick Delesque Stadium, which is 3,000? or the Mountain State Derby attendance record, which is 3,033 set two years ago at Hoops Family Field in Huntington. You know, I think you take a look at the attendance records here, and I think the big winner tonight, no matter what happens, is the state of West Virginia in mm. soccer and helping to grow the game um, in this state. I was here a long time ago when none of these stands existed and it was just a couple of rows of bleachers and just to see this environment and this high level of play is just is just really, really tremendous. Sordo links with Simone. Simone gets around one but can't get past Broughton. Throw in for the herd near side. Nearing the half hour mark at Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium. Nick Farrell and Adam Zundel here for this Sunbelt rivalry clash on ESPN Plus. West Virginia leading three to two thanks to a barrage of goals in a span of less than two minutes. Marshall trailed 3 1, responded in the 18th minute with a goal off a corner kick by Morris Dugan, and that's where we stand at 3 2. Thinking about an equalizer here is Marshall. Just touched away by West Virginia. Pinto keeps it in near side. Good dummy there by Pablo Simone. He's exciting to watch on this near flank. And he's won another corner for Marshall. I think West Virginia's got to be a little bit careful here in the middle of the park as players are making runs to, towards the near post. There's big gap of space between those center backs that Marshall will be able to send some players in on the attack in those gaps. First changes here for Marshall. The newcomers are number 12, Joao Roberto, a freshman from Santos, Brazil, and Alvaro Garcia Pascual, the junior from Spain and a transfer from Coastal Carolina. To the bench, Iomesh, who picked up a yellow card, and Amen Sordo, who also has been issued a yellow card. Yeah, Garcia Pascual is a game changer here coming in for Marshall. As the foul is whistled on that one. He was off to a really hot start this season with four goals and three assists in the first five matches, but he's missed about a month. Saw a little bit of action the other night against Coastal Carolina. Interestingly enough, he was in street clothes in the first half and then came out and got dressed at, at halftime and, 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 got, and got some minutes. But he is a, a big time player here for Marshall. We talked about the offensive and attacking depth. He is a part of that component. West Virginia trying the long ball again from the restart. Sukata won the first header, but Fujita took it away. Now here's another chance for West Virginia with numbers. Olakainen options either side. Picks out Ors Navarro at the top of the box. Curler! Wide. Goal kick. And another Marshall player hits the turf and leads to a turnover. West Virginia goes on the attack. And the first change for West Virginia is Christou for Sukata as we take another look at the Ors Navarro shot. Young ball boy 
very aware to duck out of the way there. That was a heat-seeking missile. Sukata to the bench, Konstantinos Christou, the freshman from Nicosia, Cyprus, into the match for WVU. Uh-oh. Another dangerous moment there at the back, caused by West Virginia's press. It's a corner kick coming for WVU. And, and again, it's not unusual for Perot to be, to be touching the ball there. That is what Marshall does, but West Virginia is sending pressure. And again, it's a little bit of the environment making this, making every situation just a little bit more difficult. The substitutes, Christou to take the corner. A Mountaineer down in the box. Marshall heads it away. Falls all the way to Ryan Bear near the midfield circle. Caldera. Olakainen with a bit of space. Christou who can be creative with the ball on his feet. Jorgensen. And Broughton for West Virginia. Forz Navarro on the far side, has it under his control. Lays it off to McCormick. Great move by McCormick. Bristu can't corral it though. And Marshall has possession. That was an instant there for Marshall where I thought they might want to play a little bit quicker. You know, the, the instinct is to go and possess and build, but at this moment, perhaps getting a little bit uh, up the field a little bit faster might be a good course of action. Well, here they go. Again, so quick back to front. This is better for Marshall here. Bell charging in. Shot is deflected by Borutsky. A good hard tackle. Simone splitting a pair of defenders well and draws a foul. He's again asking for a yellow card. And this time, a Mountaineer will be booked. It's Freddie Jorgensen. A uh, great individual effort here by Simone splitting the defenders. Again, they're locked arm in arm there. That's going to get the card on Jorgensen. Uh, what a great individual effort there by Simone once again. Asks for the card, he gets it. And a dangerous opportunity here for the Thundering Herd. Service coming again from Sterngard. Two players in the wall for West Virginia. Lee punches it skyward, and McCormick heads it out of the box. You know, interestingly, on that set piece, Marcus Caldera had the assignment of Dugan. So you have a center back, big, strong, physical, and you have Marcus Caldera, your, your forward. Big, strong, physical, trying to hold him off. But that is uh, another, again, Continue to watch that on these set pieces here for Marshall. Caldera playing wide now. Just saw him take a touch on this near side a moment ago. He normally slots in centrally as a striker for WVU, but we've seen him drift wide to the wing. Marshall has a player with that similar sort of versatility, and Matthew Bell can play striker, can play winger, can play as a central midfielder. Yeah, when you're a playmaker, you can do it all, and you might be asked to do it in a couple of different spots. They see West Virginia. After that touch from the goalkeeper, it's a rush. We talk about a gold rush. It was a <laughs> rush of gold jerseys towards Marshall once that ball leaves Perota's foot. Free kick for Marshall. Ooh. Simone has uh, hit the turf a couple of times here this, after, uh, this evening. Certainly a physical game as we take another look at the tackle that brought Simone to the turf. A match that has lived up to the hype so far. Final 10 minutes of the first half, West Virginia leading Marshall 3-2. Simone, Sterngard, no foul, says the referee Lucas Feathers. Chance to counter again for West Virginia. Charging forward is Luke McCormick. McCormick has it taken away by Simone. He's not just taking the hits, he can deliver them himself, can the winger from Spain. What a ball there from Marshall. Good first touch. 
releases the pressure and allows Marshall to be further up the field with the ball. With a nice, deep switch. Here's Okiyoshi. Pinto. Simone in space. Okiyoshi again. Bell. Two players collapse on him. A third comes in, and it's the third. Broughton who takes it away. West Virginia wants to go when it takes possession away from Marshall. Here's Marcus Caldera. Thundering Herd sending numbers backward. Great ball to Ors Navarro just wide. Oh, that would have been a beautiful finish had it connected. I see Sergio Ors Navarro with a little bit of a look of disappointment there. Caldera does a nice job playing it forward himself into space. A good ball here. And this is effort. Oh, on the outside of the foot. I missed that the first time. Uh, got it off his boot quickly. Get another look at this one. Plays it quick off the outside of his boot. boot catches them a little bit off guard. And that allowed Sergio Orzavardo to make that aggressive run towards that near post. Two changes for West Virginia. One of them is Toma Di Cotone, the far side fullback for West Virginia. His first action after missing four games with a groin injury. Here he is in possession. And a great move by Di Cotone to move West Virginia forward. The other new substitute is Ryan Crooks. Di Cotone, extremely dangerous on the right side. A terrific crosser native of Lille, France, and a grad transfer from UConn. Played four seasons there. He's making his ninth appearance for the Old Golden Blue tonight. And he certainly got introduced into this game quickly with touches and a run. Jorgensen with the header, but it falls to Matthew Bell. Oh, tricky move by Bell, but the referee again says no foul. What a dart that is. Ors Navarro, Perota's off his line. Did he handle that ball? The, ref the referee says no, but West Virginia's coaches seem convinced that Perota handled the ball outside of the box. Well, we're going to get another great look at it. West Virginia is getting out on the attack so quick, nope. I believe it hit his leg. Absolutely. Boy, that's fast action. But again, as you mentioned earlier, that's Perota's ability to come out and almost be a, like a sweeper keeper to be that last man to beat. It takes a lot of courage oh. <laughs> to be able to go guts. and do that. Guts, all of that. And he is able to do it. And again, nothing seems to bother him. He's very composed. Inside a sea of people, Freddie Jorgensen to deliver a service from the far side corner flag. Broughton, oh, again, another ambitious moment there from West Virginia. There's been about three of those in the last 15 minutes. Nothing doing there. Mountaineers still lead by a goal. I bet West Virginia saw the highlight film with uh, Sordo hitting the bicycle kick uh, the other day. Gives that an attempt. Uh, West Virginia, the ball goes out of play, and we'll give the ball to Marshall. Well, Adam Sunder, with so much happening in the early goings in this match, we have neglected to even mention the connection between West Virginia head coach Dan Stratford and Marshall head coach Chris Grassy. Referee Lucas Feathers having a discussion with Ryan Crooks as we've got a restart coming from Marshall. Of course, Grassy, the former head coach at the University of Charleston, hired Dan Stratford as an assistant coach. Grassy took on the job at Marshall. Stratford replaced him at Charleston, winning a pair of national championships together. A four-year span of Final Fours consecutively for Charleston, led either by Grassy or Stratford. Two coaches that go way back and seem to have not just a good friendship, almost a brotherly relationship. Yeah, I mean, how much fun would it be if they really disliked each other? But no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's great. They're great friends. Uh, they talk all the time. Um, they talked about, uh, again, this match is getting, in, in, the intensity is turning up a couple of more notches, but, but, but great friends. They talk all the time. They went to, uh, and had a, a pub, went to the pub uh, the night before the match. Um, Coach Stratford owes a lot to Chris Grassy. He admits that. And they, together they built a powerhouse at Charleston. And then Chris Grassy went and said, we're going to go do this at Marshall. And they did, won the national championship. Go, 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 go. 
West Virginia into the box. Ryan Crooks runs out of space. Goal kick for Marshall. But just to put a, a bow on that thought, Adam, it's not just the teams. You, yes, the players are going to decide the action, but a big reason why there are so many people here tonight, a record crowded Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium. Have to give credit to these two coaches, Grassy, Grassy for Marshall, Stratford for West Virginia, both of them integral in elevating the level of play in men's soccer here in the Mountain State. Yeah, and I think it, it kind of can go back to that mentality that they built at the University of Charleston, the fact that you can win a national championship in West Virginia. And again, the same sort of approach is what Chris Grassy used at Marshall and Coach Stratford with his own spin and own adaptation is trying to do the same thing at West Virginia, certainly has the Mountaineers highly ranked and is seeking the first star on their crest. Stratford credits his time at Charleston under Grassy and then as the head man, as the reason why he has enjoyed success at WVU, he learned the most important lesson in his coaching career at Charleston, that it's the coaches and the environment they create that leads to winning, not the facilities. Yeah, recruiting helps, but it's the atmosphere that starts with the coaches that can lead to long-term sustained success. If you're a winner, you can win anywhere. And, I, and both of these coaches are winners. And you plop them down in any other place, you can take them to Alaska, they're going to win in Alaska. <laughs> the crowd loves that from West Virginia. Mountaineers heading the other way once again. Final three minutes of the first half. And to be clear, I'm not trying to get rid of either of them. No, We right. love this. We love this. We love what they've brought to the state, what they're doing for the universities. Christo with a great move. Christo with a great pass. Ryan Crooks off the post. That looked like 4-2. Ryan Crooks had a day to set that one up. So he, close. He really did have all the time in the world. A great ball there across the pitch, and that one just hits the post. You're going to get another look at it and just see how much time Ryan Crooks has for that. He's asking for it, begging for it. That is an unbelievable amount of time in the 18-yard box to get that shot off. Final two minutes of the first half. We remind you to stay with us during halftime for our halftime update from Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium. Uh-oh, another opportunity perhaps for West Virginia. No, it does fall to Fujita and maybe a collective sigh of relief there from the Thundering Herd pushing it forward. Great dummy by Sordo. Oh, rather, Simone Jorgensen recovers and keeps it in. Here's Okiyoshi. Matthew Bell, who scored the opener to Pinto. Pinto's cross is deflected by Crooks. Pinto tries again. Crooks wins the duel for the moment. Priestu and Sterngard jockeying. West Virginia takes the ball back. Ors Navarro wants the ball. Service is a little bit short. Morris Dugan collects. Final 45 seconds in the first half of this Mountain State Derby. Olakainen with the interception, looking to see if he had numbers. He's got an overlapper, but chooses Ors Navarro. 30 seconds to go. We've had magic, we've had drama in the first half. Do we have one more spark still to come? 20 seconds left. Olakainen is plowed through. Here's Joao Roberto from Marshall with the chip. Oh, Freddie Jorgensen with an absolutely class play on the end line before halftime. That is incredible. What a play. The Marshall bench is asking for it to be reviewed. I surely saved it. Yeah, I believe because he, he caught it right at the line and sent it over the crossbar. And we will have a video review. We're watching the replay ourselves, but the referee Lucas Feathers has just gestured that he is going to come over to the near sideline and take a look at the replay. So here's how this works. It's not a broadcast feed. It's the Spidio camera. 
which is basically an all 22 cam. One more look, that might be the best look, right, yeah, Adam? Yeah, and I gotta tell you, I mean, just, I, I'm not a, I don't do physics, <laughs> but just basically the way uh, where Freddie Jorgensen is, hits that ball and pops it over the top, I, I just can't see a way in which that would be a goal. It's close, it's close. One more look at the best angle. The entire ball has to cross the byline. Yeah, and it's going to be tough from that angle, but it would be difficult for that ball to be in and for him to pop it straight up and not hit the crossbar. I guess that's ultimately my point, but it looks like the teams are staying out here as this one gets reviewed. There would only be seconds left. I guess that would be the other part of it is, is how much time would be left on the clock. It was the freshman from Brazil, Joao Roberto's opportunity that for the moment was cleared. For the moment was cleared off the byline by the right back, Freddie Jorgensen for West Virginia. One more look at Roberto's chip over Lee. It's very close. What a terrific individual effort, you thought, Marshall. I mean, you just, you cannot let up in any, either team cannot let up on, on this one. And, and Jorgensen hustles back and tries to save a goal as we have the call here. The referee, Lucas Feathers, with the verdict, no goal. And the call on the field stands. We're going to take one more look at it. Freddie Jorgensen, a heroic play to keep West Virginia in front of number one Marshall. It's a great individual effort, and, and it really kind of changes the tenor of this one. If that one goes in, uh, you know, Marshall carries all of the momentum, and, and the nature of that play, that hustle, was huge for West Virginia. We've got Dan Stratford joining us, the head coach of the Mountaineers. Dan, a quick thought on the first half. We knew it was an unprecedented night, but uh, this has been nuts. You having fun? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, yeah, it's good. What it's allowed good. you to score three goals in the first half? Uh, I think we executed really well in some of uh, some of the high press moments. Uh, the tactics so far have, have uh, worked really nicely. Uh, we still want to make sure we can pick our moments and, and keep the ball, but. I guess, yeah, my only disappointment, as, as mad as it's going to sound, is that we haven't scored the fourth and the fifth. We've had some incredible opportunities. Close one just wide, hit the, hit the post. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, make sure we're on the front foot in the second half and, and extend the lead. Dan, thanks. Thank you. West Virginia leading 3-2 over Marshall. Goals by Sergio Ors Navarro and a brace by Marcus Caldera, making the difference so far in the Mountain State Derby. Our halftime report from Morgantown coming up next on ESPN+. Plus. At halftime, the mentor is trailing the mentee. Dan Stratford leading Chris Grassy 3-2 in this Mountain State Derby. And Adam Zundel, oh my goodness, we've got some highlights, don't we? Don't we? Let's start with the opening goal, which put Marshall in front. A great goal by their leading scorer, Matthew Bell. Yeah, Matthew Bell starts that play and then f finds his way to the back post to knock it in and give Marshall that one nothing lead. But then a barrage of goals, three to be exact, from West Virginia to answer the first coming from the Spaniard, Sergio Wars Navarro, after a takeaway. Yeah, turnover in the midfield. Great layoff there by Luke McCormick and an absolute stunner of a strike there to the, level the match. The Sun Belt's leading scorer then took care of business after that. Marcus Caldera, the sophomore from Canada, a brace for the second time this season. Marcus Caldera is a big time goal scorer. We see, again, it's gonna be another turnover leading to a, a West Virginia goal as Caldera puts that one away. So that made it 3-1 and it was just the 12th minute. Then a little bit of more action here. It was a very, it's been a very physical game. West Virginia and Marshall just going toe to toe. But this play, Adam, is good as a goal for West Virginia. <laughs> we had five goals in that match, and maybe the best play of the night so far was Jorgensen taking that ball off the line over the crossbar. They looked at it, no goal, and West Virginia goes into the half, leading three to two. 
Likely looking at an attendance record tonight at Dick Dulesk Soccer Stadium. The facility record is 3,000 for a women's soccer NCAA tournament contest back in 2008, pitting the Mountaineers and USC Trojans. Tonight, they had to bring in extra bleachers. This match was sold out three weeks in advance through 45 minutes. It lived up to the hype. Act two has begun in Morgantown. Teams have changed sides. Marshall in green and white stripes now attacking the goal to the left on your monitor. West Virginia in all blue on this gold rush night now attacking the goal to your right. Free kick coming for West Virginia. And Adam, it does have the sense that after that momentous clearance by Freddie Jorgensen just before halftime, how are these teams going to respond and how critical are these next 10 to 15 minutes? Yeah, we can't wait to see momentum uh, ended there. If Marshall puts that one in, this whole match is, is on its head a little bit. West Virginia saves it, takes it off the line. Perhaps they're feeling a little bit better about themselves going into the break up a goal. But again, we heard Coach Strafford, he wants more. We're not sure three goals is going to win this, so you have to be on the attack. Looks like the lineups have remained just about the same for both of these teams as the lineups that went into the locker room for West Virginia in the back four. Toma DiCatene and Freddie Jorgensen, the fullbacks. The center backs are Max Broughton and Braden Borutsky. The midfielders still Ryan Bear and Otto Olakainen. Sergio Ors Navarro, Luke McCormick, Marcus Caldera, and Utaro Sukata re entering on the wings. Give credit to the West Virginia back line. We talked about a little bit of a makeshift. Carlos Hernando not seeing action tonight. He is available but has not played. But the West Virginia defenders have been able to stand up as best they can against this exceptionally talented Marshall attack so far. Everything has to be caveated with, oh, yes. with what might happen next. The attack for Marshall, it looks like it's Alvaro Garcia Pascual, it's striker. The center attacking midfielder is Matthew Bell. Still on this near side wing is Joao Roberto, whose chip was cleared on the end line by Freddie Jorgensen. And the far side winger remains Pablo Simone, who scored two goals and had two assists Friday against Coastal Carolina and is the reigning Sunbelt Conference Offensive Player of the Week. By the way, eight weeks, eight weekly awards from the Sunbelt Conference. Seven belong to Mountaineer and Marshall players. Here's Roberto. His cross is defended by DeCotene and out for a quarter kick for Marshall. And a yellow card has just been issued to Sergio Ors Navarro in the 48th minute. I think the referee might have played advantage on a foul near midfield. Two cards apiece here. Two for Marshall, two for West Virginia. So something to keep an eye on here as play continues in the second half. Marshall's able to score on a corner earlier tonight. And a double up. Stern guard. A whistle from the referee, Lucas Feathers. The assistant referees, Ross Klein, Stuber, Sam Reynolds. The fourth official is Kevin Cook tonight. Sturmgaard will do it again from the corner flag. Here's the service from the sophomore. Near post, Bell had a great look at it, but it's off the side netting. The fans clad in green tonight were excited, thinking that it had gone in. And Bell gets a really good look at it. We've seen a goal line clearance. We've seen post. We've now seen side netting twice. And we've seen the back of the net five times in the first 20 minutes of this contest. I mean, we said, Nick, all, all soccer matches are like this. <laughs> That's right. Whoever said that soccer always ends in scoreless draws is That's wrong. That's right. They did, not always. They did not tune into this one. Matthew Bell dancing with it. But a bunch of yellow shirts collapsed in. Max Broughton charging forward for West Virginia. Broughton, the center back, wanting to get involved. Springing the Mountaineers forward. Utaro Sukata against Hai Pinto on the far side. Sukata lays it off to McCormick. McCormick wants a shot. Scooped up by Gabriel Perota. And lurking there was Sergio Ors Navarro. If Perota spills it, but Perota does a nice job. Making a clean save there, not allowing 
the rebound. That's the third save of the night for Marshall's goalkeeper from Paraguay. Jackson Lee, meanwhile, has not made a save and has conceded two goals. This is the first time this year that Peralta has conceded multiple goals in a game. Both of these players tied for the Sunbelt Conference lead in clean sheets with six, and it's going to remain that way after tonight. And Perota has played a lot of soccer. Again, the active leader in shutouts in the NCAA. And I got to tell you, I, I think this, the goal score tonight for both teams are, are credits to the offensive players. Taimu Okiyoshi for Marshall. Garcia Pasquale gets rid of it quickly. Simone crossing, Pasquale in the box. Okiyoshi with a touch, cleared by Olakainen. Second chance is just wide. A good look by Alexander Sterngard. Goal kick, West Virginia. And Jackson Lee started to lay out for that, knew he had it covered, knew it was going wide. So the crowd held their breath there for a moment, but Jackson Lee knew it was going to sail wide. And we're going to get a great look at this coming right at you. You see he starts to dive. Oh, that was, uh, that was close there. Two chances for Marshall in the first five minutes of the second half. One for West Virginia that was easily saved by Perota. Look at the fight from McCormick to get back onto his feet. To Caldera on the wing. Olakaina. McCormick and Olakaina. Now Ducatine all the way back to Braden Borutsky. Marshall's back line remains the same here to start the second half. Oh, there he is, Utaro Sukata. Maybe a little bit too ambitious there. Could have picked out a teammate. It's a goal kick. That is the spot on the field that he really, really likes. He can go cut, he can cut back towards the center of the field, or he can continue to take it there towards the end line and send it across. Again, I agree with you. I think he was a little impatient, a little ambitious trying to put his name in the book here tonight. Marshall continuing to work from the back. West Virginia takes possession away. Here's Ryan Bear. Bear still with West Virginia. McCormick to Caldera just outside the 18. Caldera side netting again. But he's won a corner for WVU. It'll be the fourth corner for WVU in the eighth total on the night. Good square, square ball there to Marcus Caldera. Gets a shot, the deflection called for the corner. Mountaineers gonna take their time here with the one goal lead and a dangerous server of the ball here for Utaro Sakata. Mountaineers trying to execute here on a set piece here in the second half. I mean, we've never seen scenes like this at a <laughs> soccer match, have we? College <laughs> soccer, at least. Sukata with very little room to work with on that far corner stick sends his to the near post and it's cleared away. Bear with a little hesitation sends it all the way back to Jackson Lee. Mountaineers will try to regain their shape. Big boot from Lee. Sukata, the runner on the far side, headed away by Pinto. They're kind of joking about it, obviously, uh, with uh, saying that all matches are like this, but these are two teams that really like to play. This is not unusual. And when they go together, um, you're going to see uh, so, some goals, which has been a lot of fun as we get an update there from Central Florida. The Golden Knights with the lead. Again, UCF is number two in the Sun Belt, so trying to get a full three points. Looks like they are well on their way. Yeah, and that's an important match too, right? Because if UCF wins, that moves the, goal, the Knights to 13 points. If Marshall were to drop points tonight, that would mean it's a one game differential approximately between those two teams if these results were to stand. Still a lot of time for that to change here though. Caldera was onside as the ball was played. He's on a brace already. He lays it off to an open Utoro Sukata who sends it over the bar. A prime chance for the winger from Japan to make it 4-2. Oh, that is one he is definitely going to want back. Caldera does a nice job using his body 
And then setting things up for Yutaro Sakata, who just does not get a clean boot on that one. We've got to be disappointed. And now he's got to collect himself. It's, you know, it went against him there. And he has to collect himself and try and make the next play. 15 total shots for West Virginia, including that shot by Sukata. Nine for Marshall. Six on target for West Virginia. Three by the Thundering Herd. Mountaineers lead on the scoreline by a goal. And they have since the 19th minute. What's been interesting here, Nick, both teams pride themselves on a lot of depth. Both teams, I mean, the Chris Grassy method is to play a lot of players and just kind of come in waves. Although tonight, the benches have been a little bit shorter, just a couple of subs for each side. So interesting to keep an eye on that. Will we see some subs here in the second half with legs maybe wearing down a little bit because there's been a lot of energy expended here through 55 minutes. Oh, Caldera's pass back to DeContenay, almost split Roberto free. It's a throw in for Marshall. Godar working against Ors Navarro and retaining possession. Sterngard back to the goalkeeper Perota. Marshall, the only team with a perfect winning percentage. 12 wins, no ties, no losses entering this contest. Heard charging forward. Simone against Jorgensen. He brings down Jorgensen, free kick West Virginia. I'll tell you what, that was a beautiful ball there in the midfield from Pasquale. Look at that, just with the spin on it. But great job defensively once again by West Virginia. That's West Virginia associate head coach Andy Wright chatting with Constantinos Christou and Ryan Brooks. Both players came on as substitutes in the first half. Quick reminder about the substitution rule. You cannot re-enter in the first half. You can re-enter in the second half. So to your point earlier, Adam, we could see maybe more subbing in what's left of this contest. Here's Ryan Baer to Toma Di Cotone. His first match back from injury after missing four in a row. Bear for West Virginia. Garcia Pasquale applying some good pressure to West Virginia's midfield and back line. Yeah, continue the thought about the subs. Both teams do have a lot of depth, and while each individual player that comes in is going to have a little bit of flair, ooh, tough contact there. That would be worth a, a talking to at least as the clock is stopped and I believe the referee is going to his pocket for another booking here tonight. The third on Marshall. That one's going to go on Roberto. We're going to get a good look at this contact here. Almost like a block charge situation. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of, right? Roberto trying to come over to cut away the space for Decotene as he made a run. And I think Decotene might have uh, may, may have done his best to initiate a little bit of contact as well. Mm -hmm. The other two Thundering Herd players in the book, Ionesh and Sordo. Ors Navarro's shot is deflected. Luke McCormick wins it back for WVU. Ors Navarro may have been in an offside position there. No, the flag is up. He fouls Roberto. That's a tough one there as it looks like Roberto initiates that contact. But again, I think um, might have been a little bit of a harsh card on him just a bit ago. So perhaps giving him the benefit of the doubt in that moment. Well won by Alvaro Garcia Pascual. But West Virginia gets a free kick. I think it took halftime to settle this match a little bit. We were end to end for so long, and I think it has settled a little bit here in the second half. Not that there hasn't been action and scoring opportunities, but it, it's looked a little bit more traditional here, I think, in the first 12, 13 minutes. Ball turned into touch by Morris Dugan, who scored the second goal for the Thundering Herd, and now we will see changes for both sides. For Marshall re-entering is Adam Iomesh, who's on a yellow card. 
for West Virginia. The newcomers are Ryan Crooks and Constantinos Christou. Both players saw the field in the first half. Iomesh started the game at winger for Marshall. Yeah, and as I was saying before, while the players bring, you know, a little bit of individu individuality to it, there's not a drop off for either side. They're going to bring in subs that are of high quality and would probably be in the starting 11 for any other team in the country. But that's an important part of building your program and being a championship program is having depth to withstand a difficult college soccer season. Caldera has won a lot of balls tonight, and he's won another one there, but West Virginia gives possession away. You know, Jackson Lee's been called upon tonight to distribute and have the ball at his feet, looking a lot like uh, Gabriel Perota, and he's done a nice job under pressure. It's interesting, Adam, when he was recruited from George Mason out of the transfer portal, that was something that Coach Stratford, Stratford touted about him, was that he was a good distributor as well as a shot stopper native of Perth, Australia, but he was born in Salt Lake City and has a U.S. passport as West Virginia commits a foul. Free kick for Marshall to restart. Ball taken away by the Mountaineers. Caldera with a little shimmy to McCormick on the far side to Sukata. Sukata deflected. Well done by Sterngard. Decotene charging forward. He's down in the box, but there's no foul and no question about it. Ticotene sliding in to win a tackle. Throw in Marshall. Well, it was right in front of the Marshall bench, and, and they were wanting something a little bit more severe, but I, I kind of thought Ticotene went right over top of the ball. We've just about reached the hour mark in the 26th Mountain State Derby. Nick Farrell and Adam Zundel here with you on ESPN+. Plus. Mountaineers lead the all-time series 16-7-2. But the last three meetings evenly split. One win apiece and one draw in the fall of 2021. Those are the only three meetings under Dan Stratford and Chris Grassi. From 2004 until an NCAA tournament match in 2019, this series went dormant. Sukata, great ball to McCormick. McCormick has options. Caldera, back to McCormick. Back to Christou. Christou. Still crease due, but he's run out of space. Crossing in, deflected out. West Virginia corner kick. Lots of possession for West Virginia inside that 18-yard box. Ends up earning a corner kick. And Chris Stu fighting off to hold on to that ball and sending that one across. Cleared away by Marshall. Look at this packed house here tonight, enjoying a great one, a classic. I believe the attendance number was just announced. I think I heard 3,100 plus, which would be a facility record, as well as a Mountain State Derby record. Service from Jorgensen, a good ball to the back post, but it's headed by Takahiro Fujita. McCormick sends it back into the AT. This time it's Okiyoshi with the header. It falls to Tsukata, who gets tripped up just outside the 18-yard box. No whistle. Great defending by Christou. Here's Ryan Crooks. We've got about 28 minutes left in this Mountain State Derby. If you're feeling a bit frantic, a bit nervous watching this, well, just strap in. Crooks. Christou. Deflected and cleared by the thundering herd. Sukata in space. He's worked the far side most of the match. Near side now. Sukata's cross to the back post is a dangerous one. Fujita had to knee it over the bar. Another corner for WVU. It's sixth of the night. You talked about how Marshall has really not trailed much this season. I would venture to also guess this is about as much on the back foot of a match that they have been here this season. West Virginia really impressive in this last little stretch, really possessing the ball and creating some opportunities. 
changes for both sides. Amen Sordo, the forward who started the match for Marshall, is back in. He replaces Alexander Sterngard, which is interesting because Sterngard is a midfielder and Sordo is an attacker. Meanwhile, a straight swap at right back for WVU. Decontene to the bench. The Morgantown native Huckabee, who started, is back onto the turf. 27 minutes left. Jorgensen service, headed by Christou. Might have been headed away by a thundering herd player. Back to Jorgensen near side. Sukata looking for Caldera, and it's cleared by Dugan. Yeah, thinking back to that first half, Marcus Caldera in the early moments had an opportunity, didn't quite convert, and then responded with the brace. Thinking back to Yutaro Sukata, had it one really on his boot that uh, let get away from him here in the second half. Will he be able to find a similar response either in a goal or some playmaking ability? The official attendance number is a record at Dick Dulesque Soccer Stadium, 3,147 at tonight's match. The previous men's soccer record, 2,900 against UC Santa Barbara in 2009. The facility record was 3,000 for an NCAA tournament match featuring the WVU women's team and USC. It's also a Mountain State Derby record. The previous attendance record, 3,033, set in the fall of 2021 in Huntington. And as we heard from Chris Grassi earlier this week, he says, why stop at 3,000? What about 5,000? What about 10,000? <laughs> That's an optimistic number, sure, but maybe if they play it at a different stadium, a bigger venue, maybe it could happen someday. Well, and again, if they play like this, yeah, I think a lot of people mm. would come and, uh, come and watch. This has been a fun brand of soccer. We still, again, have a long way to go in this one, but it's been a lot of fun to watch, and it's been really high-quality play, which at the end of the day is, is really attractive to the fans. Physical two. Ryan Bear takes Okiyoshi down to the turf and springs West Virginia forward. Sukata finds Caldera. Caldera on his left. Oh, what a goal! It's a hat trick from magical Marcus Caldera. West Virginia four, Marshall two. What a goal here by Marcus Caldera. Pulls it back on that left foot and just slides it right into that far post for the hat trick for Marcus Caldera in the biggest of moments. We talked about which players are gonna step up under these bright lights in front of this sellout crowd. And Marcus Caldera has responded with three goals. Three of the very best. He's made them pay on the biggest of stages. Marcus Caldera, the first West Virginia player to score a hat trick since Andy Bevan in 2014. Three on the night, a dozen on the season for the sophomore from Canada. A night of nights, and this is his. Big time players make big time plays in big time games. How about that one? Two goal lead for West Virginia. A wild and wonderful West Virginia hat trick by Magical Marcus. The perfect season for Marshall was very much in jeopardy. The Thundering Herd trail by two once again. 25 minutes to try to change the script on this dramatic night in Morgantown. So interesting here on that restart, on the kickoff, Marcus Caldera was on the turf, wasn't ready for the kickoff, and kickoff went ahead. He was on the, he was on the opposite side. That's why the coaching staff right now is, is furious with this restart. By the way, it's Utaro Sukata who gets the assist. He's got nine on the season to lead West Virginia. Can Marshall respond? Huge moments here for the thundering herd. This is Amen Sordo to Pablo Simone. He scored two against Coastal Carolina. Jorgensen punches it over the byline. Corner kick coming for the thundering herd. And you can tell there is a much greater sense of urgency now for Marshall after conceding again. Yeah, and we just saw a, a shot of Coach Stratford there. He is very typically un, uh, composed in these situations, disappointed with the kickoff going off there, and is letting the fourth know about it. Fifth corner for the Herd. Headed away by Max Broughton. One back by Hai Pinto. Pinto. Good little chip. Ayamesh crossing. 
Headed away again by Broughton. Mountaineers need to clear. Uh-oh, that's a high boot from Luke McCormick. It will be a free kick. No yellow card yet. Thought that could have been questionable. And as we look at the replay, the conversation with the West Virginia coaching staff and the fourth official, Kevin Cook, ongoing, the argument from West Virginia is that because Caldera was not in possession, that allowed basically a power play momentarily for Marshall because they didn't have the full numbers behind the ball. Yeah, and I think the other part of that is there have been moments tonight when the kickoff has been paused for Marshall mm -hmm. players uh, to either get back on side in the right spot. Um, and so I think that's also adding to a sense of, of the frustration. Marshall scored from a corner kick in the first half. This is Amen Sorda. Service toward the back post. Ryan Crooks got a foot to it. It's into touch for a throw in for Marshall. And remember that Sterngard typically takes the corners for Marshall, so he is on the bench. Yeah, they're going to call. Uh, Huckabee with a foul there, and it was a clear two-handed push. So, uh, that, again, that, that, not a lot of easy calls out there for the officials. I think that one was. 68th minute, West Virginia 4, Marshall 2. Goals for the Mountaineers by Sergio Ors Navarro. And a hat trick from Marcus Caldera, the first by a Mountaineer in nearly a decade. By the way, Caldera also the first Mountaineer to score 10 or more goals in a single season since Andy Bevin scored 13 in 2014. Another service from Marshall. Great ball into the box. Shot goes high over the bar, way over the bar. Also heading for the gas station down the road on the Star <laughs> City right. Bridge by Amen Sordo. Yeah, I think the, the river might have gobbled up two balls here tonight. But this is really good service, actually, on that, uh, on that set opportunity. Right on the six, giving Marshall an opportunity. Not able to get a full look at it. The second West Virginia native has entered the Mountain State Derby. That's Max Trethaway. He replaces Freddie Jorgensen at the left back position. Trethaway, a junior from Charleston, West Virginia, won three AAA state championships in the SSAC with George Washington. 69th minute, West Virginia four, Marshall two. The Mountaineers have led since the 12th minute. Max Broughton won a foot race, an important one at that, against Tio Godar. The Thundering Herd has it back here. Oh, great touch there by Amen Sordo on the far side, but it doesn't result in anything positive for Marshall. West Virginia back in possession and putting numbers forward. McCormick was offside. Referee Lucas Feathers sees the flag. Marshall has taken it quickly. Play resumes. 70th minute. More substitutions getting ready to check in. Ryan Amaro for Marshall and Jake Ross for West Virginia. The freshman likely going to come in to give a spell to Caldera, who's played every minute for WVU. Huckabee all over that through pass. Ball deflected out by Morris Dugan. Throw in Mountaineers, and there will be more changes. It's Ross for WVU to replace Caldera and Amaro for Marshall to replace Dugan. They see Marcus Caldera. I don't think we've seen the last of him here tonight getting a spell, but also want to credit West Virginia's defenders stepping up in some moments here tonight. We see Max Broughton make a couple of plays and step up. Dante Huckabee made an important intervention there. If it gets past him, Marshall is off to the races. So West Virginia defenders under pressure all night. Did a pretty solid job of withstanding the thundering herd. And remember too, Adam, that West Virginia doing this tonight without Carlos Hernando, who previously had played just about every minute at center back. We're told that Hernando, who did not play against South Carolina due to an injury, is available tonight. But so far, so good from that center back tandem of number four, Borutsky, and five, Broughton. You know, I thought there might have been some gaps uh, as the center backs got pulled apart in the first half. But in this second half, West Virginia has done such a good job of possessing the ball that it's limited those opportunities. And have some more extracurriculars. Well, Ryan Bear has just been shown a yellow card. Yutaro Sukata then hit the deck. 
And the partisan Mountaineer crowd did not seem to like that very much. So there's the yellow card to bear. The sixth total player into the book in the 71st minute. And Sukata gets a talking to. Yeah, it looked like uh, Sukata was Maybe trying down to delay. a little bit easily. Well, he was trying. I think he was. Well, the argument that at that point was the, the delay. Mm. Well put, Adam. And we've got another stoppage here as our referee Lucas Feathers continues to sort things out. There's the whistle. Play resumes. Under 20 minutes left. West Virginia up by a pair. Oki Yoshi. What a great ball that is to Joao Roberto. Ionesh has it taken away by Borutsky. Ross, the new entrant, runs out of room. And that touch by Roberto a moment ago reminded me, Adam, that the maybe one of the biggest moments of this game, not maybe, one of the biggest moments of this game came when Freddie Jorgensen cleared a chip off the line <laughs> right before halftime, just seconds remaining before the half. It could have been 3-3. It stayed 3-2, and now the Mountaineers lead by two. Yes, it was a huge moment, and it was a great individual effort and hustle. It, but you know the other part of that is that that play started with about 20 seconds so if you think that you're in the clear in the final minute if you got a one goal lead you don't Marshall can do it in a hurry and when, so it was a good example of West Virginia's defending but also how quickly Marshall can attack well Roberto is a dangerous man we've seen it he's in possession now he sets up Okiyoshi Okiyoshi great through pass to Roberto Roberto down in the box no whistle play resumes West Virginia coaching staff imploring Jake Ross to move forward. Back pass to Perota. And now Okiyoshi resetting for Marshall. Strong touch by Ayamesh. It was a good job by West Virginia to possess that ball. It was, it was bouncing around. Mountaineer was able to settle it to take advantage of that turnover rather than letting it continue to bounce around and let Marshall uh, get back the ball. Crooks is taken down by Godar, free kick West Virginia. West Virginia versus Marshall, the 26th Mountain State Derby, the fourth rendition featuring Chris Grassy as the head coach of the Herd and Dan Stratford as the head coach of the Mountaineers. Right now, the protege is leading the teacher. Stratford with the upper hand over Grassy's thundering Herd. winning possession back for West Virginia. Jackson League and a blast it. Roberto was almost there. Fujita with the header and it falls to Christou. He's got options to his left. Christou going left. Cutting back right, Christou, 5-2! What a night for West Virginia! Marshall came into this match having only given up five goals this season, and it's five in 74 minutes for West Virginia. This one comes off the deflection for Christou and gets into the back of the net. The Mountaineers with the 5-2 lead. It's the first collegiate goal for Konstantinos Christou, the freshman from Nicosia, Cyprus. And it is gigantic. This is the night. And it has well and truly been West Virginia's night. Now, Christou, this is an individual effort here. You mentioned that he had options. Brings it back onto that right foot. Gets a little bit of a deflection, and all Peralta can do is just see it go past him. A little too much space here, I think, at the top of the box allowed. The Mountaineers put in a fifth, and you see the Marshall defender just go to the turf. This is unprecedented here for the Thundering Herd this season. Again, as we come to the final stage of this match, this final stage is still, you know, still 17 minutes left in this one. 
composure again is key for both sides. That's what Dan Stratford told us in the lead up to this match. He knew it would be an electric atmosphere, but he said, can we feed off it? Can we use it to our advantage? Composure absolutely critical over the last 16 minutes here. But West Virginia surely has fed off this record crowd tonight. Yeah, I think the last thing Coach Stratford would have wanted to see is sending 3,000 fans home disappointed. And again, I think both sides can take pride in the effort tonight. It's been a well-played match. West Virginia so far getting the better of it. Putting in five goals. And right now, the Golden Blue contingent are happy. But again, Marshall has a lot of grit and determination and most importantly offensive firepower that you know we've seen some wild things here tonight well ryan bear has gone to the bench west virginia has shifted things up a little bit it like, looks like we might see a little bit more of a defensive formation from wvu in the final 15 plus minutes dante huckabee has slid into the center defensive midfield position along with otto olakainen and toma di Cantone is back in at fullback marshall continuing to fight but West Virginia wins a free kick. WVU since 2006 has won 17 contests against ranked opponents in Morgantown. But against top five teams, WVU is 5-1-1. One, and one. West Virginia has had help from Dan Stratford in six of those seven contests since 2006, either as a player, assistant coach, or as the head coach as recently as this season against number three, Portland. And Stratford was quick to point out that, <laughs> that the, the only one. loss That's was right. against Maryland while he was at Charleston. And so that makes Stratford's record as either a player, assistant, or head coach 5-0-1 oh, against top five foes in Morgantown since 2006. This could be number six. 15 minutes still to go, and we know that Marshall, which came into this contest, the nation's leader in scoring, could still have something to say. Hard tackle by Huckabee, and it's a foul. Those are the moments that you really need to avoid if you're West Virginia fouling in these dangerous areas. A set opportunity could really get Marshall going here in a final flurry. Just have to be careful and mindful and disciplined to not surrender these types of fouls. This is a dangerous area here for the Thundering Herd. Marshall's first goal came for the run of play for Matthew Bell. The second goal in the 18th minute by Dugan came off a corner kick. Look at the eight again. Over top of the ball is Adam Iomesh, the Paris native. Headed away by Decatene. And a foul by Marshall. We mentioned that UCF score, and boy, isn't that looming large right now. The Knights were leading Coastal Carolina earlier in the night, 3-0. If that result stands, and this one does too, Marshall would be at 15 points, UCF at 13, West Virginia at 12. Too soon to talk about a title race here in the Sun Belt. Maybe we'll save those conversations for after full time. Still business to attend to here in Morgantown in the 26th Mountain State Derby. Yeah, and it was interesting to hear Coach Grassy talk. Uh, obviously the national championship knockout play, that's really important, that's special. But he also thinks that winning the Sun Belt regular season championship is a great mark of his squad because you have to run such a gauntlet to get through it. Bors Navarro with a rip, Peralta with a save. A terrific technique from Peralta on that save, and UCF has wow. really laid it on the Chanticleers tonight. Coastal lost 6 1 to Marshall Friday, losing by five goals again against UCF. The Cotone charging forward has his pocket picked. He's got to get back. Here's Okiyoshi. Out to Pablo Simon. So dangerous on that wing. Cross into the box. Olakainen flicks it away. Now cleared by the West Virginia native Trethaway, who draws a foul. And we will have a yellow card. That's Hai Pinto into the book. 
Trethaway is up, but a second Mountaineer has now gone down in Yutaro Sukata, who is holding his leg. Take a look at the replay here on the foul on Trethaway. That puts Pinto into the book. But it's a bit concerning here that Sukata, who is absolutely electric on the wing for WVU, made the gesture to request a sub a moment ago. Training staff out to attend to Yutaro Sukata. Looked like he might have been pulling out a hamstring, but uh, we'll let the trainer sort that one out. The trainer, by the way, Ethan Solger, got caught during the UCF game with the magic spray. <laughs> Turned into a big time celebrity around here after that. And, you know, and a difference here in the college game in, well, quite frankly, football across the world is that the clock does stop on this. So this isn't a time wasting tactic or anything like that. Looks like a spray's out there. There it is. There you go. That's that's his thing, man. The the magic spray. What does it do? No one knows, but <laughs> apparently helps. It's the, it's the old placebo effect. Hey, Marcus Caldera, what a sensational night. The first hat trick by a Mountaineer since Andy Bevan in 2014. Really the difference maker tonight. He's been great in flashes this season, but this is by far his best outing. A terrific goal scorer on display tonight in the toughest test in the brightest environment here. He has been outstanding. Again, his work rate is terrific. Puts himself in great spots. Composure right in front of the net. And what about this third goal, Adam? I mean, the placement. This is this is pro-level stuff from Caldera on the weak foot. Yeah, he found the right spot, found the right pocket of space. You see him celebrating, and you said it perfectly placed, just tucked inside that far post for the hat trick. A wild and wonderful West Virginia hat trick from Marcus Caldera. He entered the night with nine goals. He's got a dozen on the season now. He might be in line, too, for another game winner, which would be the fourth of the season and seventh of his career. Okay, play restarts. Sukata is on the bench, walked off on his own power. Caldera has re-entered for him, so it's Caldera, Ross, and Ors Navarro, the attacking trident for WVU. Could they add another one? Ross attacking. Ross down in the box. No penalty, corner kick. We've got so many skyward hands appealing for a penalty. A lot of activity down there right in front of the Mountaineer fans. But it will lead to a corner kick here for West Virginia. Ross with a really nice run here towards the end line. Really didn't have much, quite honestly, on the, on the far post. I think that's a good no call on that one as Ross hit the a new sensation tonight for Chris Grassi. He's not seen his team trail for this long or in this matter all season. It's been stunning. We talked about Marshall only giving up five goals coming into this one and letting in five here so far. It, and we knew it was probably going to be an offensive uh, battle here tonight. We got that message early on that it was going to be that way, but still for West Virginia to put in five tonight, might be beyond anyone's expectations. Marshall's 12-game unbeaten streak is the longest winning streak in program history. The longest overall unbeaten streak in Marshall soccer history across four and a half decades of men's soccer is 13 in a row unbeaten. This would take a major, major effort to earn a point at this juncture nearing the final 10 minutes with the thundering herd trailing by three. They looked unbeatable at sometimes leagues better than all of the opposition they faced. Not tonight. After going up 1-0, West Vir going down 1-0, I should say, West Virginia found a way to take control of this match through three goals in quick succession. Urs Navarro, Caldera, Caldera less than two minutes apart to take a 3-1 lead over the thundering herd. WVU has led ever since. And again, Jorgensen taking the ball off the line just before halftime. A key moment in this match really allowed West Virginia to come out flying in the second half. I think there's two keys to this one here so far with still 10 minutes to play. West Virginia's effectiveness pressing Marshall in instances 
and taking advantage of those moments and possession. That's been the other big key for West Virginia. The Mountaineers have had a ton of this ball here tonight. Again, probably exceeding their own expectations. When they want it, they have it. And when they don't have it, they get it back. That's been the theme, at least for this second half. Adam, I know he's not on the turf right now, but Ryan Bear, the midfielder for West Virginia, also had a critical play that sprung West Virginia's first goal. And if there was ever a turning point in this match, it was that moment that took the tempo away from Marshall, gave WVU a goal, and led to two more after that. Yeah, it seems like Marshall's 1-0 lead is a lifetime ago here tonight. That ball played in. Jackson Lee is on it. And when Marshall had that early goal, the... It was still so early that I still think there was a lot of energy in this building. I, I, we talked about it at the time. We didn't think one goal was going to do it. I don't think Marshall probably thought one goal was going to do it. West Virginia, I'm sure, did not. So we knew that there was going to be a long way to go in this one. But for the Mountaineers to try and find their way back was definitely a challenge here. With that against them, the number one team in the country down a goal. Great touch there by Ors Navarro. Good ball from Ors Navarro too. Grace do. Just can't connect. In front of Ors Navarro, behind Ross. Free kick coming here for Marshall. West Virginia seeking its first win over the national number one since 2011 against UConn. WVU won that game 2-0. Who played in goal for the Huskies that night? Andre Blake, arguably the best goalkeeper in the MLS, playing for Philadelphia Union. There were professionals on the field that night in 2011. There are bona fide professionals on the field tonight. Matthew Bell for Marshall is a, a surefire pro. Maybe Marcus Caldera will be someday too. Dan Stratford has told us he thinks Utaro Sukata's highlight tape that he's gonna send to scouts is going to be the easiest one he's ever had to make. This is high, high level Division I men's soccer that we've gotten to enjoy tonight. A seven goal thriller in the Mountain State Derby that has absolutely lived up to the billing. Another West Virginia native into the match, Ryan Holmes getting some minutes for Marshall. The third West Virginian to see time. This is Iomesh. Desperation cross is gobbled up by Jackson Lee. Matthew Bell got the scoring started. West Virginia responded from Sergio Ors Navarro and a pair from Marcus Caldera. Magical Marcus put the finishing touches on a hat trick in the second half to make it 4-2. And then Constantinos Cristu added a fifth for WVU. The challenge for West Virginia now is managing these final seven minutes in a professional manner to try and seal these three points. Broughton with a great step. He has been superb tonight. One of the, West, one of the advantages that the Mountaineers have offensively is that Marcus Caldera is so good at holding the ball. Here's Holmes for Marshall. Holmes with a good left-footed cross. Garcia Pasqual couldn't handle it. Iomesh trying to find Bell. Huckabee got there in time. Brian Amaro thinking about it. Headed skyward by Broughton. Lee does what he had to do. Could have been dangerous there as that ball popped up into the air. We saw West Virginia score off a deflection on Christus that fortunate for the Mountaineers. And, you know, another key part of this one here tonight, I think, has been after Matthew Bell scored that goal, his touches have been limited. And credit West Virginia for having a role in that because Matthew Bell can change games in an instant. He just has not had many opportunities to do that here tonight as he actually, I think, is hitting the turf right now. He is. Utaro Sukata, who was injured a moment ago, has come back on. And that is Bell down inside the midfield circle. We've got a bunch of players who are down right now, including Luke McCormick getting a stretch. Good gesture there between Bell and Sukata. I mean, these are two tremendous attacking players. Thought it might be his night early on, Matthew Bell with that goal in the sixth minute. 
He averages a goal contribution per game in his collegiate career, which is just absolutely sensational. Got a goal tonight, so that average will remain. 31 goal contributions in 31 matches. 13 games played this season for Matthew Bell. Has a goal or an assist in 11 of them. I mean, it's just he gets out there and he produces for the thundering herd. And, and seeing these bodies on oh. the ground, I mean, that just goes to show you how hard these players have worked, how tough this game has been, and how much these players have given to try and get a result here tonight. Yeah, no question. These guys have given everything from start to finish, and it shows not just in the scoreline, but some of the reactions now here in the final five minutes and ten seconds. And Adam, it's worth noting, too, that West Virginia did get a little bit of a layoff between games, South Carolina and tonight against Marshall. West Virginia is coming off a stretch in which it played eight contests in 23 days. That's a lot of work for this team that has still come out tonight and attacked this Marshall team that leading into this night seemed invinci invincible. Yeah, I don't know if it was maybe a day of rest, an extra day of rest, but West Virginia came out flying. Again, we talked about maybe a, a little bit of a smaller rotation here tonight for the Mountaineers, but it might also be buoyed by the energy of the crowd that West Virginia has, fly, has been flying around tonight, but it has been nonstop pedal to the metal here since we got started. Final five plus minutes to go. Looks like we are ready to get back underway after an injury stoppage. McCormick drops it back to Borutsky. Final five minutes now in front of an attendance record at Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium. 3,147 fans attending a match that was sold out three weeks in advance. Arguably the biggest men's soccer match played in the state of West Virginia. And Adam, the hope is it's not a one-off thing, right? I mean, as long as Dan Stratford is the coach at West Virginia and Chris Grassi, the head coach at Marshall, the expectation is this match will always be huge. Yeah, you know, these, and they, again, we kind of joked about it. These coaches like each other. They like this environment. And if you're a player, why wouldn't you love this? Whether you are home or away, you got to love the environment and the energy provided by the, the fans in, in both stadiums in Huntington and here in Morgantown. Uh, it's just a, a really great display for soccer. It is great for the state of West Virginia. And it's great for these programs. I have to credit the Marshall fans who made the trip from Huntington, too. There's a big group of them in the stands tonight wearing green who stood throughout the entirety of this match. Shot on goal, parried away by Jackson Lee, denying Garcia Pasquale. Tret away, heads it away. Sukata with the clearance. Still three games left for both of these squads after tonight for Marshall at home versus Kentucky on the 22nd, then at Old Dominion and against South Carolina on the final day of October for West Virginia at Coastal, then at Kentucky on the 22nd and 27th, respectively, back at home on Halloween for senior night against Old Dominion. Hard tackle on the far side. Max Trethaway pumping up the crowd. Love the energy these fans have brought from both sides. The flags from the Marshall fans, the pregame chanting from the Mountaineer Maniacs in the extended bleachers and on the sidelines tonight. You know, Nick, and, and talking about, you know, future matchups, what's great about this is this is just another chapter. Uh, that's the, the book is still going to be written amongst these teams, and this is going to be a really uh, important chapter here for West Virginia in this moment. The Mountaineers showing they want more. De Cotene pushing forward. A lunging tackle there by Tio Goldar, but he has fouled De Cotene. The Mountaineers can only waste so much time before the whistle might be blown before the restart, but this again is important for WVU. Yeah, De Cotene was heading toward the corner flag to try and kill some time off of this one. De Cotene thought about going to goal there for a moment, then thought better of it, veered off toward 
the corner flag, it, probably even better for West Virginia, got the foul called and, and killed a few more seconds off this clock. Adam, I'm just curious, and I'm putting you on the spot here. When five beats one in this matter, is it an upset in your book? Well, no, quite honestly, there is so little separation, I think, amongst the top 15, 20 teams in the country that when you get to the NCAA tournament, it's 48, you know, you don't just pencil in, you know, the, the higher seeded team. There is just such a little margin. And, you know, tonight seems to be West Virginia's night. These teams play nine times out of 10. You know, who knows what happens? Marshall's going to have the better of those instances on a couple of those for sure. Um, but no, when, when you're at this high level and, and five versus one, I think there's such a little difference that, it, yes, it will go down as an upset. But really, these teams aren't separated by a lot. The fans can feel it now in golden blue. On this near sideline, the coaches embracing about 40 seconds early. Chris Grassy knows that Marshall's perfect streak has come to an end at the hands of his number one protege, Dan Stratford. 30 seconds left in the 26th Mountain State Derby. West Virginia, a hat trick from Marcus Caldera making the difference. Final 10 seconds. Marshall may still win the Sun Belt. It's won a national title before. It could still do so again. But this night belongs to the Mountaineers. You can paint the Mountain State gold and blue. West Virginia 5, Marshall 2. The Mountaineers have defeated the number one team in the country for the first time since 2011. And the fans are rushing the field again. I'm not sure I've ever seen this for a regular season match. Uh, unbelievable scene here at Dick Dulles Soccer Stadium. And again, this was this was West Virginia's night for the 90 minutes. They were the better side. Overwhelming performance here, getting five goals to get this victory here. Adam, I know at times we've joked that West Virginia is the soccer state. But a night like this makes you truly believe <laughs> big things are happening in the Mountain State. Good things are still coming Marshall's way. A Sun Belt title could still be in the cards for the Thundering Herd. But the perfect streak has come to an end. First loss of the year for Marshall. The record now is 12-1-0, 5-1-0 in the Sun Belt Conference. The old Golden Blue victorious tonight for the 17th time in Mountain State Derby history. The record for number five West Virginia improves to 10-0-4, 3-0-3 in the Sun Belt. Once again, I, I'm not sure I, I've seen anything like this. This is a great memory for these players. You know, not to spin too far forward, but you're going to have to kind of put this one away, really for both sides. If you're Marshall, this was not your night. It just, it just wasn't. Marshall has got a lot of victories ahead of it. They're as good as anybody in the country. We've talked about it. It just wasn't the night for the thundering here, thundering herd here tonight. West Virginia on the other side was about as good as you could be to score five goals against this team and create a terrific memory as you see there singing country roads. Well, Adam, can we begin the conversation about a potential title race? Marshall 15 points, UCF 13, West Virginia 12. Maybe there's still something to be said with three matches to go. We'll save that conversation for later because right now we're joined by the man of the hour, Marcus Caldera, the sophomore striker with West Virginia's first hat trick since Andy Bevan in 2014. Marcus, have you ever played in an environment like this? Not at all. I mean, if you could just pan the camera behind me, the scenes are unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. We've talked about big time players making big time plays and big time games. Did you feel that pressure that you needed to step up here in these moments tonight? I mean, initially, um, they're the number one team in the country. They put up a hell of a fight, but um, we got over the line and luckily I was able to get a, a hat trick with it. So, yeah. You guys went down by a goal. What was the response like for you to get back in this match? I mean, you saw it straight energy. Um, and I'm kind of, it's kind of hard to hear you guys because of what's going behind <laughs> me, but uh, yeah, 
I mean, like I said, unbelievable. Marcus, the resiliency that you guys showed tonight, the battle, the way that you guys took the tempo and the pace of this match to Marshall, scoring five goals against a team that had only conceded five all season. What does that say about your team? It's a statement game, to say the very least. And this team has been through ups and downs. And I mean, Strats will tell you, this is probably the performance that we've been looking for all season. And uh, there's nothing much else to say, but West Virginia is golden blue for now. Magical Marcus Caldera pulling a hat trick out of his bag. Marcus, congratulations. Soak this one up. Thank you so much. West Virginia defeating number one Marshall 5-2 to two at Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium. It ends the perfect streak for the Thundering Herd. And it was a night played out in front of a record crowd at Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium. 3,147 fans attending this contest, setting a men's soccer record at WVU and a facility record at Dick Delesque Stadium. And I think we're going to be joined by the victorious head coach, Dan Stratford, here now getting on his headset. Okay, Coach Stratford, you've got Nick and Adam up here with you. Man, I just want to know, take me inside what you're feeling right now. This is a night that seems like it was a long time coming and you guys took advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if I have words. I'm not sure it's all entirely sunk in. I've just watched uh, the chaos that just uh, ensued there afterwards and uh, I just took a moment to enjoy how much my players were enjoying it, right? So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty special. It's a pretty big deal. And like you said, I, I can't now lie and say it's only worth three points. I told you before the game it was bigger <laughs> than that. So, um, no, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty special feeling. Hey, let's talk about this match tonight. How important was that save for Freddie to take that ball off the line at the end of that first half and really kind of set the stage for a, a really strong second half? Yeah, I mean, you have to look, you have to say now, look now and, and say um, that's probably the, the, the moment of the game, right? The most pivotal moment in, in that regard. Um, I honestly thought we deserved to be in the lead at half time. And uh, yeah, uh, I was brave enough to tell the guys I thought we could win five or six two. So disappointed we didn't get the, the, the sixth, and, and uh, yeah, Mystic Meg over here. Well, you said maybe five or six, but could you have played really much better here tonight? You know I'm going to say yes. Well, <laughs> well I mean, you, I know you wanted a couple more goals, but really back to front, challenging your back line. Those guys stepped up here tonight. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Second half, Max and Braden, incredible. What an effort. Um, we. We challenge them to do uh, do things defensively that we've not done particularly well the last couple of games, and be a little bit braver with how they step. So, uh, from that perspective, couldn't be couldn't be more proud of, of of what they achieved and keeping the clean sheet in the second half was ultimately the most important thing. But I, again, I said if we keep a clean sheet, we win. But don't forget, we can we can score another two or three here as well. Dan, one last question for you about your sensational sophomore striker Marcus Caldera, the first hat trick by a Mountaineer since 2014. That's big time stuff from Marcus tonight. <laughs> I mean, big players deliver on big occasions, right? And uh, he did exactly that. Couldn't be more proud of him. He deserves it. Dan, congrats. Thank Soak you guys. this one up. Appreciate it. Well, Adam Zundel, that was a ton of fun. Yeah, I hope all of these fans come back out tonight to watch the Mountaineers and that Marshall packs their stands in a response here later on this season. A terrific advertisement for college soccer, a terrific advertisement for the Mountain State Derby, a tremendous match. It was a pleasure to be here and watch this terrific uh, match here tonight. Just a, a great effort here from both sides. You can bathe the Mountain State in rays of gold. West Virginia 5, Marshall 2. For Adam Zundel and all the members of our crew, I'm Nick Farrell saying so long from Dick Delesque Stadium. All games airing on the ESPN Network, so streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.